Well, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese flew out of the country again yesterday, heading to a NATO meeting in Lithuania, where he will offer increased military and financial support to Ukrainians defending their land against invading Russians. If only he was so staunch in defence of territorial rights for his own citizens. Last week, the government of the Australian Capital Territory invaded Calvary Hospital on land legally occupied by the Catholic Church and forcibly repossessed it and all the assets thereon. Michelle Pearce, the new CEO of the Australian Christian Lobby, said in an email today, quote, The Labor Greens ACT government has forcibly taken over all land, property and assets of the hospital. So aggressive was the takeover that the legislation allowed for the deployment of police to use force as is reasonably necessary to gain control of the facility if necessary. It is reasonable to conclude the hostile takeover of Calvary is ideologically motivated. And if so, the assets grab is a thinly veiled attack on the religious freedoms of, uh, of institutions and citizens. But they're not the only ones whose property is under threat from the government. It wouldn't have bothered Albo much, but the farmers and other owners of blocks of land greater than 1,100 square metres that he flew over en route to Lithuania now have only slightly more autonomy over their property as Ukrainians trying to expel Russian soldiers from their apartment blocks in Bakhmut. Albo's Labour mate, former Premier Mark McGowan, uh, his parting gift to the good burghers of Western Australia is the revised Abor Aboriginal Cultural Heritage Act, which makes it illegal to modify a block of land without approval from a local Aboriginal elder. On Saturday, the new state premier, Roger Cook, told the West Australian newspaper, quote, our Aboriginal cultural heritage laws do the same thing as the voice. In other words, they trample all over your property rights. That's what the voice will do. No wonder the voice is being shouted down in the West. In O'Connor, one of the geographically largest electorates in the world, which takes up 1.26 million square kilometres of southern Western Australia, the local Liberal member, Rick Wilson, has surveyed constituents and found that 80% of them are planning to vote against The Voice. 